Blessed Sunday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Glad to come together with you again today. By God's grace and mercy, I'm here to be able to do another devotional video to honor, glorify Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, together. And it is Sunday. I encourage you all, uh, as I always say providentially, if you can get to church, please do so. Um, I hope you can go to a church that will produce more holiness in your life. Um, Hebrews 12, 14 says, without holiness, no one will see God. And 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16 reminds us that we are to be holy because God is holy. I remember years ago, there was a show called Highway to Heaven uh, that ran from 1984 to 1989. And in that show, a man portrayed by uh, Michael Landon, an actor, went around as an angel trying to do good works to show that the highway to heaven was uh, by doing good deeds. Well, I mean, there is some truth to that. We ought to do good deeds, but the highway to heaven, as the Bible says, which is our final authority in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8, is the way of holiness. Thomas Watson used to say he was an old-time Puritan born in 1620. He died in 1686. He would say, the king's highway always leads to holiness, a set-apart life. And today I wanted to speak on the thought for the day in Ezekiel chapter 34, where as we're going through the book of Ezekiel, we see that there were some false shepherds leading the people astray, and there's nothing new under the sun. As we're living in the days of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 now, in the latter days, People have itchy ears. They want teachers to make them feel good. And I remember when I got saved in 1985, during the 1980s, you had preachers and teachers on TV demanding money from you, uh, name it and claim it, uh, prosperity teachers. Today, as we're in the 21st century, 2023, I think the real false gospel today that's being uh, pushed uh, the propaganda of the um, social justice gospel. You have these pastors and reverends demanding social justice, uh, more interested in politics instead of shepherding the flock that they have underneath them. You see Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11 tells us that a true shepherd tends to his flock. And a lot of these uh, teachers and preachers and self-proclaimed reverends and um, evangelists a lot of them are all about worldly desires and trying to promote pride, ethnic pride, instead of teaching what 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 to 4 tells us, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, Christ is our shepherd. He is the shepherd of the sheep, John chapter 10 verse 11, that gives his life for the sheep. A few verses later in John chapter 10 verse 14 the true shepherd will have sheep that will listen to his voice and his voice only. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 reminds us that he is the great shepherd of our souls. My friends, we're living in a day where there are so many leaders. And I really try to, when I get out here, and I know 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 speaks of under shepherds. Those are teachers today, preachers, uh, elders, pastors. Anyone that's proclaiming the word of God has to be very careful because James chapter 3 verse 1 says that teachers or preachers are going to be judged more harshly because to him much is given, much is required. Luke chapter 12 verses 47 and 48 reminds us of that. I try to come out here if God gives me the health, the grace, and the will to do devotional videos on social media and I really try to share the word of God, recite Bible verses, remind you to look at these scripture verses for yourselves, examine what the Bible has to say. Somebody has to preach the word of God. Blessed are the feet, Romans 10, 15 says, that share the word of God. You know, we have to share the word. People have to see my face. Maybe you see uh, on social media, uh, somebody what somebody posts in words. So we are messengers of the word of God, but we're not the message. On my um, platform, I try to recite and remember scripture verses as much as I can. 
people have told me God has blessed me and he truly has with a uh, kind of a photographic memory where I can remember dates and Bible verses. That's all fine and good. But I also have to obey it in my own personal life when I shut this camera off and I got to live my life out. But my friends, as teachers of the word of God, anyone that gets on social media, a pastor, uh, somebody that leads a Bible study, youth group, whatever it is, children ministry, the Bible has to be the final authority. All of scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 and Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 and 19 reminds us not to add or take away from the words of God. The Apostle Paul told us as his, he was the second greatest teacher in the Bible in the New Testament except for Jesus Christ himself. And in Acts chapter 20 verse 27 he said he did not forsake to share the whole counsel of God's word. From Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to Revelation chapter 22 verse 21. All of Scripture is God-breathed. 2 Timothy 3.16 reminds us of that. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, even told us in John chapter 5, verse 39, that we ought to search all the Scriptures because the Scriptures testify of Him. Not just the red letters you read in the Gospels. It's all of Scripture that testifies of Christ. My friends, if you really are in the Word of God, Romans chapter 3, verse 20 tells us that the law will convict you of sin, the word of God, the law, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, will it be like a tutor that will teach you to come to Christ. You see, what the word of God does is it shows you who you are, who Christ is, and you cry out to him. You plead with him. You want to live for him every day. There's an elderly man in my church, 93 years old. He buried his wife a few years ago. She died, and I speak to him often, and he has no television. He hardly listens to the radio. Maybe he'll listen to family radio, some Christian hymns. He says all day long, all he does is read the Bible, meditate, pray. He sends out letters to politicians. He knows a lot of politicians encouraging to, to come to Christ. He is not delving into this world. He's not absorbed with the things of this world. He is so focused on heaven. He's so focused on being holy. My friends, that should be an example for all of us. I hope today's devotional video will draw us closer to Christ. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Who will see this devotional video today, Lord, in a fast, as you can hear that car going by really, really fast, a fast and furious world. May we be still and know that you are God, as Psalm 46, verse 10 reminds us in Jesus' name. God bless you all.